qualifying for race number five of the season, Division One of the Skittle Super Speedway Series, ready to take place here at the Dragonette Super Speedway. Yes, indeed, we uh, actually have replaced FTF on the schedule. FTF was supposed to be run last week. We couldn't get FTF to work, so the next track was moved up, which was M&M's. And we were going to move FTF to this weekend, but due to issues of it not loading, we are replacing it with Dragonette for the year. Ten minutes here in our practice se or our qualifying session round one. A few drivers have already gotten out on track. Saw Seth Cole there, our winner from Picks Creek, looking at Ashlyn Boyd in the 54, a former pole sitter this season. Ashlyn Boyd winning the pole back at Armory Digital Super Speedway. Also qualified well for last week's race at M&M's. Qualified third. And comes into this race currently seventh in the point standings. Trying to keep the consistency going. A lot of drivers points wise breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief last week at M&M's due to the fact that Brady Burkhart is now a two-time winner this season, winning at uh, both the season opener at Daytona and last week at M&M's, which confirms Brady Burkhart will be one of the eight competitors from Division I that will be competing in the playoffs now. Basically, two wins is a guaranteed locked-in position into the playoffs this season based off of our 15-race uh, regular season. And Ashlyn Boyd's about to set the first lap time officially here of this qualifying session in round one, 47.057. We'll wait to see what Seth Cole lays down as he'll be the second one and just a little bit better at a 0.36. So far, four races, three different winners. Burkhart with his second win of the year last week is now up to third in points. Seth Cole, our Pigs Creek winner, is 11th. And Ryan Butcher, our winner from Armory, currently situated in 18th. So right now, only three of the five, or three of the eight positions in Division I for drivers to make the playoffs are held by previous race winners. Which means there are still five spots up for grabs points-wise at this point in time. Right now, they would be held by Philip Goldberg, Trent Dunham, Vance Caldwell, Sebastian Kukulon, and Preston Plourd. The car we're looking at here, Ashton Boyd, right now would be the next one out, seven points back from the final playoff position as things currently stand. Joshua Lee there in the five. Joshua Lee coming into this race struggling, big time struggling, 38th in points, still looking for his first top ten of the season. William Duncan right now fourth on the charts. Duncan comes into this race currently in 17th. Did not have a good run last week at M&M's. Dropped eight spots in the standings. Hunt was dropped to ninth and now up to fourth. Cody Smart was at the top of the leaderboard for speeds just a few moments ago before getting topped by now current fastest car James Qualls. Of course, Cody Smart's had a fast car most weeks in qualifying, going all the way back to the Daytona race to start off the season. Was the fastest car there and then got caught up in a wreck, had to go to a backup car and did not advance to round two as Shane Lake will get around him. Cody Smart comes into this race currently 13th in points. Shane Lake just passing him 14th in points. So both these drivers looking for a good qualifying result to keep with been pretty good consistent seasons going. Shane Lake, top of the board with a 44.602. And the car just ahead of him, William Duncan, jumped up to second. Last week's winner, two-time winner, Brady Burkhart, just jumped up to second place. Looking at Joshua Sapuli there, Jake Rogers, there's Seth Cole, Vance Caldwell. Caldwell coming into this race, 4th in points. Cole, 11th in points. On the flip side, though, Sakuli comes into this race, 24th. Jake Rogers currently finds himself in 22nd. 
We do have a driver in this field who has a new paint scheme. We're going to try and find him momentarily as we're looking at fourth on the charts right now, Brady Burkhart. First confirmed driver into this season's playoffs. Picking up his second win of the year last week at M&M's. Now to the inside of JT Bryant. There's Sebastian Kukulon in the 42. Kukulon lost four spots in the standings last week. Dropped from the points lead down to fifth after he had a struggling race at M&M's. DNF'd in that race, if I recall correctly. This is a big pack right here. This could be where you might see someone be able to challenge that 411 that was laid down by Shane Lake. And there you go, top of the leaderboard is Cody Smart with a 307. Duncan with a 385. So they jump up to first and second. Now you got a couple of blue ovals. Currently the two fastest cars in the field. Let's jump and see if we can find that new paint scheme. There it is. Jack Mitchell running the Mountain Dew colors on his number nine for this race. First four races was running the NBC Sports car. And the reason that he's running a secondary car and not many other people are is because he either painted himself or he had somebody else paint him for him. I've uh, stated this, if people want to run secondary cars in the series, they are more than welcome to, but I don't have the time to be able to paint them, so I can't paint them for you. Jack Mitchell coming into this race, currently in 32nd in points, although he did have a pretty good run last week at M&M's. Car just in front of him is struggling in the points, Andrew Miller. He's currently 37th in the standings, though he does have one top 10, which number of drivers down at the bottom of the point standings do not. All right now, Miller is 17th fastest on the charts, and we almost just had a challenge for the top speed. Ashlyn Boyd with a 30 or with a 371. That's seven one hundreds off Cody Smart's lap right now. Riley Spurley tube in the 38. We saw him. Oh well. This is interesting. Derek Hamill and Laurent Lamount currently with an issue on pit road. And if I'm not mistaken, that's that pit stall that uh, has the two pit stalls merged together. Shades of that Snickers Cup Series All-Star race back with Levi McIntyre and Jacob Lawler. And that's interesting, too, in the terms of Laurent Lamount, because Laurent Lamount has ended up making it into the final round of qualifying every single week since Daytona. Daytona, Armory, Pigs Creek, M&M's. He's been in the second round, actually had the pole last week at M&M Super Speedway. And if they can't get that car out there and get him a, a top 10 run, it could be the first time this season that Laurent Lamount will not be in the top 10 for the starting grid. Cody Smart at the tail end of this pack. Shane Lake, Ashlyn Boyd also in this group. They are all inside the top 10 in speed charts, as is Zachary Taylor and Joshua Lee. They're both in this pack as well, so right now they're in good position to move on to the next round. Just had someone get knocked out. I don't know who is in 10th place, but they just got taken out of the top 10 by Jose Mills in the 6th. Kyle Matthews has also jumped up into the top 10. He's up to 6th. Roger Ray up to 5th in the 68. Gotta think Matthews and Ray are probably in a pack together. Let's see if we can find them. I think it was Spurly Tube that actually got knocked out by Jose Mills. There's Jefferson, Shelton, Preston, Pleurd all working together there. Okay, there's Mills, there's Ray, and there's Matthews all together. Mills just jumped up to ninth. So trying to ensure he's going to stay in there, and that puts Sebastian Kukulon on the bubble spot of 10th place. And I would look for maybe someone like the 76 of Ryan Butcher, the 12 of Eli Bright back here maybe in these closing stages to make a charge into the top 10. Let's see. They're going to have... 
the opportunity to finish this lap. I'm gonna drop back here to the 12 because it looks like he could be the one that might be able to set a lap time that could maybe knock Sebastian Kukulon out. Right up on the back bumper of Roger Ray. Let's see if Bright's gonna be able to displace him. And up to sixth, he did. Eli Bright up to sixth. That eliminates Sebastian Kukulon. Puts Jose Mills on the bubble spot and I don't know if Mills is going to be able to survive now. We're gonna have to see. With 10 seconds remaining in rundown, when those 10 seconds are finished, I believe that the standings will be official. Eli Bright, the lone dodge in the first division with a shot clock cheese, going to eliminate Sebastian Kukulon from moving on to round two. And I believe it is going to be official now that Cody Smart, Ashlyn Boyd, William Duncan, Shane Lake, Roger Ray, Eli Bright, Kyle Matthews, Zachary Taylor, Brady Burkett, and Jose Mills, they will be moving on to round two. With a chance of starting on the pole, only one of those drivers has started on the pole previously this season, that being Ashlyn Boyd back at Armory. And it is complete. So how about that? It's also going to be interesting to see because I don't know if they would car. qualify uh, Derek Hamill and Laurent Lamont having to go to backup cars due to the pit road glitch. Something tells me they won't. But we gave you the top 10 that are going to advance. So 11th on down have been basically determined. Sebastian Kukulon will start 11th. Gardner 12th. Butcher was close 13th. Almost had a shot of getting into the top 10 there as he was at the tail end of that pack that Eli Bright used to jump up to 6th. Joshua Lee, Spurly Tube, they'll be the top 15 with Roberts, Miles, Dunham, Zorlin, and Bryant. That's going to be your top 20. You look on down through the rest of the results here. And yeah, looks like starting 39th and 40th are going to be Laurent Lamount. That's going to be his worst start of the season. And Derek Hamill as neither one of them were able to actually get a lap time in. Both of them spawning in at the same time with that uh, pit road stall glitch. And so there you go. Tough break for both of them. Going to be having to start near the rear of the field, but I don't think... Well, even if they went to backup cars, they're still going to be starting at the rear of the field because they didn't get a lap time in here. So only 38 cars managed to take time in this qualifying session round one. But now we got to find out who of the top 10 that advance are going to be starting on the pole. Will Ashlyn Boyd get his second top uh, second pole of the season the odds not in his favor looks like we may end up getting a new pole sitter but only time will tell round two coming up right after this round two of qualifying set to be run here for division one ten drivers moving on to this final round with a chance of starting on the pole position and we have a 90 percent chance of a different pole sitter this year, or uh, yeah, a different pole sitter this year at this racetrack as the only former pole sitter to make it here into round two. We already documented Ashlyn Boyd, who had the pole back at Armory Digital Super Speedway. Also have Brady Burkhart and the double zero moving here into the second round. And Burkhart, even though uh, he has two wins this season, Daytona and last week at M&M's he is yet to start on the pole position this season and for the first time this year Laurent Lamount is not in the second round of qualifying so a streak of four straight races to start out the year of starting inside of the top 10 comes to an end here at Dragonette. Laurent Lamount going to be starting at the rear of the field. I'm uncertain whether it's going to be 41st or, four, or I'm sorry, 39th or 40th, but uh, it's going to be in the last row because neither he nor Derek Hamill set a lap time in round one. Look at Cody Smart, who could have very well been your pole sitter back at Daytona, but we already documented back in round one how he had to go to a backup car after getting involved in a wreck in round one. And if I am not mistaken, I believe the lap time he set down, the fastest lap time in round one at Daytona, was actually in said backup car at the time. Smart ended up starting that race from the 38th position. Cody Smart's best start this year 
was actually last week sixth place. He started at M&M Super Speedway. And Cody Smart comes into this race 13th in the standings, so this is going to be a, a big opportunity for him to have good qualifying results as he tries to make his way into the top 10 in points. Well, I should say back into the top 10 in points. He was 7th in the standings heading into M&M's last week. He'll set the first lap time of round 2, a 46.598. Certainly a far cry from the 44.307 that we saw set in round one, but we'll have to wait and see as Zachary Taylor just set a 47-242. Taylor, who is 35th in points coming into this race. Nice to see him with a fast car this weekend. This is the second time that Taylor has made it into round two. He was in round two back at Armory, started fifth, his best career start on the season. William Duncan there in the 17. He set a 0 0.91 in the 47s. And there is Brady Burkhart about to set his first lap time of this session with only a minute and a half remaining. Eli Bright hit the 46s, 6.45. Jose Mills with a 6.89. And Burkhart is also in the 46s, 46.575. About two one hundredths off of Cody Smart. And top of the board. Well, it was Kyle Matthews. It's now Jose Mills in the six. And this is why we got a group. Matthews, Mills, Boyd, and Bright all together. And right now, with the exception of Boyd, they are all up in the top three with Mills up on top. Bright in second, Matthews in third. And I would watch out for that 54 of Ashlyn Boyd trying to be a two-time pole sitter this season. Gonna be on that inside line, have a big run. So too is Eli Bright because he's getting the draft off Roger Ray just up ahead. There's gonna be a good lap time set here. Someone's gonna be in the 44s and it could end up being our pole sitter at the line. Who jumps up? Bright, 44.895. I remember Eli Bright just barely got into round two of qualifying at the last minute, jumping up and knocking out, I'm trying to remember who it was. Uh, nope, not coming to me. But there's still 40 seconds remaining here, so watch for maybe Kyle Matthews there in that 0-9 at the tail end of this pack. Is somebody going to be able to knock Eli Bright off here in the closing stages? Lap time here will be counted. Mills, I don't know if his lap time is going to be any better. I would watch maybe for Kyle Matthews. And nobody improved. They were all side by side. The side draft does play a factor into slowing these cars down just a bit. And that's why we didn't see low for uh, um, really low 44s 44.3 I think was the fastest we saw in round uh, one and that was a single file lap at the time with them being side by side here the side draft pulls the cars back and kind of hinders the speed if they were single file they'd be producing much faster lap times now we've got 15 seconds left they will get to the line I don't know if lap times are going to continue to be counted here or not and as I looked at Ashlyn Boyd, no. Lap time was not counted for the 54, so I think the laps are official. And that means that it's going to be Eli Bright starting on the pole. And indeed, that is the case. Boy, what a day it has been for the driver out of Drivers Gamington Motorsports. The only Dodge in Division 1 will start on the pole position for tomorrow's race here at Dragonette. Eli Bright with the pole position. Uh, I believe this is the first time he ever made it 
into round two of qualifying. His best qualifying spot was a couple weeks ago at Pigs Creek when he started in 13th. And Eli Bright comes into this race currently situated 15th in the point stands as well. So think of what this good track position and possibly a win could do for this team in regards to where they are currently positioned in the standings. Jose Mills, a great run for him as well as he will start on the outside of the front row. Both drivers, their best qualifying efforts of the season. And uh, Jose Mills comes into this race 30th in points. He had a good run last week at M&M's trying to build off of that. And we'll see what he can do. Ashlyn Boyd was the odds not really in his favor of becoming a two-time pole sitter as he was the only former pole sitter here in round two. But he's going to start third. Kyle Matthews, that's his best start of the season as he will be fourth. This was actually the first time he ever made it to round two. And Roger Ray, good run for him there as he will be starting the completion of the top five. Then Brady Burkhart, two-time winner, will start sixth. Cody Smart will be seventh. William Duncan, eighth. Shane Lake in ninth. And Zachary Taylor will complete the top 10. At least everybody hit the 46s, but it was the 44.895 for Eli Bright that put him head and shoulders above the rest of the competition. And we'll have him starting on the pole for tomorrow's race here at Dragonette. Hope you guys enjoyed this qualifying session. If you did, be sure to give us a video like, subscribe to be part of the crew today. And we will see you guys uh, later on here tonight as Division 2. They will be having their qualifying for this race here at Dragonette this weekend as well. Then tomorrow, it is the fifth race of the season for Division 1 here at Dragonette. And then on Sunday, Division 2 will have their fifth race of the season. We are about a third of the way through the regular season. You're not going to want to miss the action. I'll see you guys next time here on the SJ Sports Channel Offline Racing at its best.